things that always uh, fascinated me was the architecture that's produced by the designer and then the architecture that is perceived and gets known by the, the public. But in the architecture education and the profession, we only focus on one of them, which is the one made by the designer. Uh, and I was trying to ask the question of how do you then reconcile these two parts? The architecture that has this particular aesthetics and geometry and form, and this particular architecture that has a narrative, a story, a cruise through time. Uh, so that has always been my preoccupation in different forms. This film, Three Flies, was part of this research which I mounted. I was looking at the representation of domesticity. Uh, and the representation of public housing in Singapore tends very much to focus on the urban scale, the form of it. You know, you see photographs of it and it's always from the outside, uh, very clean, modernist, the same kind of photographs that you would expect. And very rarely would you have this disjoint between these kinds of photographs and the mess that's inside the house, because nobody actually wants to do that. Uh, and it, where would that fall? You know, who would study these things? I was always, always very interested, like, for example, in the, this, the domesticity, because I was very interested in how people like writers, you know, who write fiction, or filmmakers, or artists, when they present that, they be they able to present the complexity of everyday living, right? Um, and then when we, we try to draw the, the domestic, somehow we leave out a lot of stuff. It was quite difficult because the idea was to draw it using the normal CAD program. Yeah? But then to take in all these details to show inside. And after a while, of course, the program collapsed because it's not <laughs> the natural algorithms and so on don't apply because the repetitions don't apply. Every single thing had to be redrawn separately and then you, know, you couldn't map it in the normal way. So this, there was an excess which the system couldn't absorb. I think it's actually interesting as well because you know this is a machine, right? I mean, like even that it has a limit, and so the, it does really talk about the limits of the discipline. You know, it's the tools are like the language in which we use, and if the language limits us and orders the way in which we think and operate, just generally we would think in a certain way because of the capacity of what we have in uh, in front of us. It was an exercise and experiment in representation. And I said, you know, I want to try and capture what domesticity is. I don't really don't know what it is. I really don't know how to capture it. But I think that it may, because of duration, and it does involve duration, it does involve repetition. And therefore, film might be the best possible tool to try and get this. And if we stay long enough, we might be able to see things that we would otherwise miss. You could see quite clearly there, maybe because it was a single person in a space, you could mark quite clearly the relationship of this person and the sense of ownership and reshaping of the space. None of these people are architects. They don't you know, train to shape space in a very distinct way. And I think that their story it will be the same as everyone's story. It's not specific to them. It will not. It, it, the, their stories are specific to them, but their ability to work around and resist is not unique to the three. It is probably the story of everyone who's living in a HDB flat in public housing now. It, it was in a very thick, small things which we take for granted which these kinds of resistance happened, you know. It was the kind of thing like not wanting to follow a trend, changing furniture all the time, you know, or resisting the idea that, you know, because the HDB would upgrade, and the outside would upgrade, the inside then would change as well and upgrade. In the way in which they still ins kind of insisted and persisted in living their lives the way they wanted it to be lived, uh, and yet still working around the structures which they had been given, but changing them, changing this gradually, and persisting in and maintaining this change through time. Uh, I, for
for me, that was something I found to be a, a revelation because I always thought change was like, you know, a revolution, you know, big change, one thing. <laughs> Um, and in a way, that's why the flats are so interesting because they are so uh, nondescript and anonymous. You know, people go in there and they do all kinds of things. You know, actually, you go into every house, you'll find quite funny things. Every single house will have a funny thing. You just walk down the corridor and you hear all kinds of sounds, all the different radio channels and the television and the kind of languages being spoken and you know the the sound. It's you don't need any kind of narrative. You just walk down and you have the whole story. I always look, like to look at photographs of buildings or, and there are some architects who would include, like you know houses, they will take photographs of houses. There are very few architects who include the family living in the house with their things. <laughs> you know, or if the children are on the floor making a mess, you'll be just cleaned up and then there'll be one toy.